My name's Jensen. I'm going to be helping you guys out there on deck tomorrow. Also to help you back there with your fishing needs back there, we have Garrett and we have Little John. They're going to be happy to help you guys out in any way possible as far as fishing goes. Please guys, don't hesitate to ask. Don't have too much pride to ask for a cast, check your drags, knots, any of that stuff. Especially for what we're going down there targeting and what we've been seeing around down there. Don't be afraid to ask to check your gear or make sure that you guys have the right gear for what we're doing down there. We want to up our chances in any way possible to get these fish on the boat. So uh, don't be afraid to ask there, guys. A um, couple things that I'd like to go over, stuff that we see on a daily basis out here that can improve our odds in catching fish, get more bites, and stay out of tangles or minimize them at least. I'll start with probably the number one thing whenever you're working on a sport fishing boat I would say the most frustrating thing is tangles and there's a couple different ways that we can avoid these tangles and um, I think I think the number one thing guys is working together and uh, communicating with each other we all get in a tunnel vision state whenever we're fishing I'm guilty of it as well paying attention to what we're doing and not really seeing what's going on around us so we're going to have to communicate with each other and talk with each other in order to get this done and in order to be able to work and to be on the same page with each other and, and not have as many tangles. We're going to have to talk to each other. So that being said, if we can do that in a nice manner, no throwing elbows, talking to each other nicely, we start off sour on a bad note first thing in the morning, it'll just go on from there. Keep in mind, guys, we're on a boat together for a day and a half, so let's make the best of it. and. Uh, hopefully catch lots of fish, but we got to get along first and that's going to be the main thing. Work together as a team to get these fish on the boat. So a couple of things that we can do to avoid tangles here. The number one thing is making sure that we're all staying in front of our lines, obviously. No angles and no tangles. Making sure that our lines are a 90 degree angle away from the boat is going to be very important. If we have a little bit of angle, your lines are back this way. Take those necessary steps, please, to walk back and stay right in front of your lines. That's really going to minimize a lot of the tangles. If you're over the guy next to you, under the guy next to you, we got to talk. Like I said before, I'm coming over you, I'm coming under you. Whether you have a fish on or not, make sure you stay right in front of your lines. It's going to be very important. I would say the number one thing that I preach every day up here, and we still have the same problems, it's going to happen tomorrow. Tangles are inevitable that it's going to happen. The number one thing, 95% of the time, what causes a tangle, the anatomy of a tangle pretty much, is that whenever people are fishing baits, we're not properly tightening up and people don't know exactly where their baits are at. What, what guys will do is they'll throw their bait out there and they're just feeding line out and it may appear that your line's right in front of you. If you're not tightening up and you're not getting the slack out of your line, you're not going to know where your bait is at. Whenever you see a fish come up with a big ball of yarn on it, most of the time, probably more than half of those people don't even know that they're in a tangle. They think that they're fishing straight out in front of them and they're in this giant mess way back here. And that's because they're not tightening up and they don't know where their baits are at. So it's gonna be really important that we tighten up. One way that we can do that is while we're fishing with the lever backwards on most of these standard bait casting reels, what a lot of the guys who fish a lot will do is just manually back off their spool the whole time, constantly tightening up, unless your bait is swimming the other way, obviously. If your bait's swimming the other way, he's going full speed the other way, you know pretty much wherever your line is going, that's about where your line is, and that's about where your bait is at. If your bait's and your spool is not going the other way, chances are your bait's probably swimming back to the boat. So we need to back our spool off in any way possible to catch up to our bait and see where our bait is at. It's going to be really important. What you can also do if you have a little bit too much slack, just simply click it in gear, take a couple cranks. Nine times out of ten, you're going to find out that your bait is not where you thought it was whenever you tighten up. And that's going to be really important that we all know where our baits are at tomorrow. Keep in mind tomorrow that we're fishing in a drift style of fishing, so there's always going to be one side of the boat or the other that's going to be the correct side to fish from. Make sure that you're fishing with the wind in your face. You'll know that you're in the right place there. If you're fishing on the downwind side of the boat, your line's just gonna go underneath the boat. You're not gonna catch a fish. 
We've got to make sure that our lines and our baits are going away from the boat. It's going to be really important to catching fish. Also make sure that um, we have good baits on, if possible, tomorrow. It's been kind of hit and miss as far as the bait goes. Uh, we're hoping for a nice good load of bait tonight. But um, it's like I said, it's been kind of hit and miss. So I'll go over a little bit of bait conservation with you and, and uh, how we like to conserve bait as well. But um, try to make sure that you have a good swimming bait, not a, a completely dead bait. There's a couple different things here. If we go fishing for bluefin, we end up seeing some bluefin around, some yellowfin. Those fish tend to be a little bit pickier. If we have a tank of better bait, that's when we're going to put that stuff out. The yellowtail and the dorado have not been as picky, obviously, whenever it comes to kelp patty fishing. And that's in those times, we're going to be using our crummier bait to, for those yellowtail and stuff like that. They haven't been, It's you don't have to have a red hot killer bait on there to catch a yellowtail or a dorado the way that they've been on kelps. Just to remind you guys that. We need to conserve bait. It's something that we work, that we're on on a daily basis and pretty much every boat you're going to be on is you're going to be in bait conservation mode and uh so make sure that we're not flicking over good baits i would recommend nose hooking baits for that reason especially with a full load of people and the size of bait that we've been getting we don't get very many bodies of sardines in the tanks back there because the bait's so big so that's basically just less pieces for us to fish with so try to be conservative as far as the bait goes. Don't be flicking over good baits. Like I said, I would recommend nose hooking your bait. We're gonna save more baits that way. We won't be casting them off. They won't be popping off of there. Um, also, if we leave a spot tomorrow for whatever reason, and I emphasize leaving a spot. It's gonna be really important. Whenever we are leaving, Please, if you guys could, throw those baits that you have on your hooks that are nose hook baits, if they're still kicking, throw them in the chum box back there. We have a metal tray that we put in either one of the bait tanks back there, depending on which one it's rotating around to. Please throw those baits inside there if we are leaving a spot. If we're on a long drift, you guys feel free, go ahead and throw them overboard. They're just acting just like chum. But if we're picking up to wind up, there's some baits on there that we can use for chum in the future. So that's one way that we can conserve bait as well. Um, another way we can conserve bait too is when we are yellowtail fishing or we're seeing kelp patty yellows, dorado, stuff like that, which is what we've been seeing a lot of. Um, we like to see the guys who know how to throw jigs and use jigs utilize those. Please do. They've been biting, biting them just as good, if not better, than they are bait. And, you know, you can get more fish on the boat too. You don't have to go back to the bait tank, rebait up. You can shake the fish off, yell their number, yell your number at us, and you can be right back in the water. So keep in mind they have been biting the jigs pretty well. That's another way that we can conserve bait. So please do that if you guys have some jigs and if you guys like fishing the jigs. Um, I encourage you guys to do so. Um, in contrary to what I just said about fishing on the windy side of the boat, the guys who are fishing the jigs are more than welcome to fish the downwind side of the boat. Um, cast it out, let it sink, wind it back up. The yo-yo jigs, I would recommend a little bit more over the surface irons. If you can cast really good, the surface irons have been wor working pretty well though. Um, a couple of mistakes that we see commonly with the jigs is the guys aren't letting their jigs sink down deep enough. When you guys think that you have sunk that jig down pretty deep, I would sink it even deeper. And the other thing is that we commonly see guys aren't turning the handles fast enough whenever they're winding the jigs in. Um, turn those handles as fast as you can on the jigs, you're going to get a lot more bites that way. Um, as far as spreading out and utilizing the space on the boat is something that I didn't go over, but the jig fishermen, if we have guys that fish jigs, that's one way that we can spread out and utilize the space on the boat. Um, this is a way that we can really avoid our tangles too, and uh, it's, it's just spreading out and and utilizing our space. There's a couple different spots on the boat, two different spots to be exact. They're going to be your ideal starting spots whenever you're fishing a bait. That's going to be either that downwind corner or anywhere in the stern for that matter, just as long as you're not dropping right on top of somebody's line, or the bow. If we're starting in those two places, that's one way that we can really spread out. 
always keep in mind that the downwind corner is constantly going to be having a spot opening up, opening up as we're drifting because guys are going to shift across the stern. Let's just zoom real quick and make a little scenario. We got the wind in our face on the port left hand side of the boat. And this is the way the wind direction's coming. Everybody's lines are all out here going up swell. Guys are fishing jigs on the downswell side. The ideal spot to start is going to be that downwind corner, which, by the way, a little hint for you guys is where the chum is going and probably the best spot on a sport fishing boat to start. If you start in that downwind corner, everybody's going to shift around, rotate up the stern to the upwind corner, and everybody's going to start shifting up the side of the boat. If we can have the latter half of the people on the, on the boat starting in the stern and doing that rotation constantly, and maybe the lesser half of the people starting on the bow, that's one that we, way that we can really spread out tomorrow and um, make it look like there isn't 33 people fishing on the boat. So there, there are ways that we can spread out and uh, please be patient like with the tangles and stuff, it's gonna happen. You're gonna end up winding a couple people in tomorrow. You may end up getting wound in. It's gonna happen, so please be, be patient. Don't get too frustrated right away. Oh, I'm getting tangled every time. It's just kind of part of it. And keep in mind, if you know where your bait's at, at all times, you're gonna get a lot less tangles and you will not have that problem. So if you find yourself getting in tangles all the time tomorrow, it's probably because you don't have proper contact with your bait. Um, a couple other things. Whenever the boat stops for whatever reason, whether we pull up on a school of fish, pull up on a kelp patty, we get a jig strike, the boat stops for whatever reason. Keep in mind guys that it takes really a couple minutes for the boat to come to a complete stop and to start drifting properly. The reason why I'm telling you guys this is within those first couple of minutes, every single line of the whole boat basically is going to go naturally to the back of the boat because the boat is still sliding forward for those first couple of minutes. So we can't soak those baits out that we initially throw in off of a stop. We have to wind up and start over, recognize that. Everybody's gonna pile up in the back of the boat whenever we stop because the boat's still sliding forward. So wind up, start over, and relocate if you haven't had a bite within that first minute or so. And that's when that boat's gonna start getting into a steady drift and we can really start utilizing the space on the boat. Um, if you see your guys, if you see yourselves piled up tomorrow and, and in a bunch, you know, and there's a bunch of fish going around you and, and you have slack lines all over and you happen to be right in the middle of that, you're probably in a tangle and you're probably not going to get as many bites as you normally would as if your bait was secluded out on its own. So recognize this tomorrow whenever we're piled up in one spot and nobody will move and you're just stuck there and your lines are there, wind up, start over, relocate, spread out. I cannot stress that enough. You're going to get a lot more bait bites basically by winding up, start over, starting over, getting another bait and, and getting another spot on the boat. Um, like I said, keep in mind that downwind corner is constantly opening as everybody's shifting around. So you can even just, whenever you're ready to put another bait on, you can even just wait just a minute and you'll watch that downwind corner is going to open up for you. So um, keep in mind that. As I was going over this, if there's any questions or anything that went over anybody's head, anything that I may have missed, um, I encourage questions here, guys. Most of the time, it, um, it reminds me of stuff that I may have missed or even some of the veterans who come out here all the time if they, if they hear anything that I may have missed. Um, feel free to speak up as well. I got a couple more things to say real quick. Um, let's go over the gear. This is going to be pretty important, the gear part of the seminar, because we've been seeing some of this big fish. As you see, I got a couple of fishing poles up here. I would recommend starting whenever we pull up on a kelp patty with no less than 40 pound test. There's been a lot of big fish around in the areas that we're going. Looks like they're seeing some yellowfin, which are better models as well. There's no point in having any, any less than 40 pound test. If you have 30, that's doable. We recommend 40 pound test to start out with. There are going to be times tomorrow, maybe, where the captain upstairs sees the situation for us to drop down in line size. I would not wait until he gives you the okay to drop down in line size. Um, because he may be seeing bigger fish around. Or, um, you know, or we should be, in a lot of times, whenever we pull up on a kelp or we start catching them right away, 
you're not going to need to have light line. I would suggest starting with that heavier line, even if we are catching smaller fish, to put more fish on the boat initially, because they only bite really good for a little bit, and then maybe back off in your line size. Um, if we see sign of this bigger fish tomorrow, basically the 40 pound setups are kind of going to go out the door. And I know that not everybody has and is geared up for these things, but <laughs> I can pretty much sit up here and tell you guys a pretty sad story really quick about what happened on this exact same fishing pool right here about a week ago. Pulled on a fish for about six hours with maximum pressure and heavy line, never saw the fish, ended up losing the fish, and it was on a two-speed reel with 50-pound test. A lot of pressure there. Still never saw the fish. If we see these bigger fish, guys, don't even bother dropping in your, your light gear for a couple of reasons. You'll probably just blow your pretty little reel up because these fish haul so much butt that if you don't have the, the gear to stop these things, you're pretty much just going to lose everything that you have right there. Your line and your hook anyways. Um, the other thing is, is, you know, let's up the chances for guys who are going to throw big gear at these things to maybe get some of these things on the boat. If we're missing fish on 30 pound tests and 40 pound tests that are just fooling us, they're not going to come back and bite again. So, um, a two speed reel with a three odd no less, a three odd or more circle hook is what I recommend. 50 pound test, um, if we see these things. I don't want to sit up here and excite you guys too much because we may not, but there is possibility that they may be in this zone and they have been um, in prior weeks that we're going to be going down here fishing for yellowfin and stuff. Um, so if we see these things, put away the small stuff. Don't even bother. Please do everybody a favor. Let's try to get some of these things on the boat. Break out the big gear for these things. Let's be ready. So if you guys have extra gear on the boat, you have bigger gear, let's get those things rigged up. Let's get those things ready just in case. Um, even that lighter gear, guys, I, I really wouldn't recommend it. The yellowtail, they're not line shy. Um, you know, if you want, back off your drags a little bit on them. But there's always... Where we're going, we're seeing signs of the yellowfin and stuff, and they're mixed in underneath these things. You kind of have to work through the yellowtail to get some of the to get to the yellowfin, and they're bigger fish. So if we're going, oh, we're just catching yellowtail, we start throwing our bass gear out out there. We're we're gonna be hooking fish possibly that you know we could be getting on the boat if we were throwing the proper gear. So please make sure that we have the right gear on tomorrow. Fluorocarbon is highly recommended. Um, it's not a make or break situation, but if you guys have fluorocarbon, I recommend putting that on a casting leader. And um, circle hooks, like I said, are also recommended. We seem to hook a lot more fish in the corner of the mouth whenever we hook them and um, get a lot more fish to the boat on that way. Like I said before, um, if you guys have any question with your gear, drags, knots, if you need anything tied, get with one of the guys or myself we'll be happy to help you guys out we want to make sure we're ready for these things and up our chances in any way are there any questions i'm starting to see some sleepy eyes here so do we have any questions anything that i uh, may have missed anything that went over anybody's head or does anybody just want to flat out tell a fish story <laughs> nothing huh i couldn't have covered it all that well pretty good you covered it pretty good <laughs> all right you guys tie the leader to your main line how do you tie it? Yeah. I'll, I'll get with me after this. I'll hook you up on that one. If you guys have any more questions, my name's Justin again. Little John's back there, and also Garrett's back there to help you guys out. Let's get a nice, loud, good luck round of applause for tomorrow. Good catch yeah.